Now the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's gonna be a beautiful day, that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I'm going fishing with Bill Dance today. Alertness, confidence, and concentration breed achievement. Whether you're a stockbroker, a grocery clerk, or a weekend bass fisherman, it's true some jobs require intense concentration. Although bass fishing isn't a job for most anglers, it's an endeavor in which concentration pays big dividends. Why do some anglers concentrate so hard? Isn't bass fishing supposed to be relaxing? Well, that depends on what you mean by relaxing. Think of it this way. The more you concentrate on fishing, the easier it is to forget daily woes. Whether it's money problems, marital problems, work problems, or children problems. For many, forgetting daily troubles is what relaxing is all about. But what does an avid bass man concentrate on while casting? Handling the boat, figuring the wind, and checking water clarity, depth, temperature, and so forth. He would probably say the most useful information he gathers comes from the bass. They tell us how to catch them and how not to catch them. If we listen close enough, they'll pass a lot of valuable information to us. Nice. He liked that thing, didn't he? Whoa, step off. Got a mouthful of grasshopper. He threw. Whoa, buddy. Concentrating on the clues. That's what I'm doing. Try to learn something from every cast. If you've been working the same type of water with many unproductive casts, don't view that experience as negative. Instead, concentrate on what those mini casts told you. Maybe the fish are not in the cover or spot you've been working, but maybe they are. Maybe it's your lure, its size, its color, its presentation. Even though you haven't yet caught a bass, learn something and catalog that information. When you do get a strike, concentration becomes even more important. What was the cover type? Where did the track occur? What was the speed and or cadence of the retrieve? Were there other retrieve factors, like the lure drops? Was it steady or erratic? What was the bait depth? What was the water clarity, oxygen level, and water temperature? If you locate bass but still don't have much success, analyze all the possible reasons. Concentrate. Should you change lures, color, or size? Or should you change all three or two of the three? Consider other factors that could trigger strikes. Yes, sir, Ray. Look at that. Nice fish. Healthy. Doodaloo. They make this quick hopper in several different sizes. Key to this thing is don't reel it too fast. You try to burn it and you kill the action on it. It's kind of a slow moderate type retrieve. You can stop it a little bit and then speed it up a little bit, but just to kind of a moderate type retrieve and it just kind of does like that. Bill Dance Outdoors is sponsored in part by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Rebel, catch fish anywhere. 
and by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Today's Conditions Log is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. because his boat's sitting right on top of us. There's one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, buddy. Don't get on that post. Strong little old fish, I'm telling you. Pretty fish, whoa, buddy. Consider what brings success in any of life's endeavors. Alertness, confidence, and concentration. There's every reason to think that incorporating each of these three traits into bass fishing will increase success. As you fight the day's first bass and immediately thereafter, think about all the subtle things that led up to the strike. Where did your bait hit the water? What was it in relation to whatever cover or structure? What was the position of your rod tip? Were you concentrating on the speed of that particular retrieve? Can you duplicate that retrieve speed on upcoming casts? Can you duplicate the depth of that retrieve? Other factors to concentrate on is your surrounding. Watch for bait fish and how they're acting. Be aware of bird activity and try to figure out why they're doing what they're doing. What about the wind? Which direction is it blowing? How will it affect your cast, your lure presentation, and which direction are the fish facing because of the wind or current? Are the strikes coming from the shady or the sunny areas? Is there a mud line or a change in the water clarity? If so, where are the fish positioning themselves? All factors you need to concentrate on. Okay, there we got it. I'm gonna tell you something. We look at this telecast rod. It's got a sensitive tip, very much so. But I wanna show you, it's got a, yeah, I would say this is about a 2080 action. Look at the tip and look at the backbone in that rod. All the way down through here. It is sensitive, but surprisingly in a rod that's a telescopic rod like that. It folds up to that. To be that sensitive and to have that much backbone and to handle nice sized fish like that, that's saying a lot. It makes it so easy to fit in a carry-on bag, in a backpack, even in a stowaway under the seat of your truck. The rod blank, well, this is constructed of IM6 graphite. So it's very, very light and very, very sensitive and extremely well balanced. 
The outfit has stainless steel guides with hard chrome inserts that won't damage or pop out. And take a look at the, the reel itself. Well, it has an aluminum spool with a front adjustable drag setting and a ball bearing drive with a continuous and reverse drive. I've got it spooled with an uh, eight pound strand original. Today's show is sponsored in part by Quantum Rods and Reels, Mystic Lubricants, Lubrication Domination, and Tracker Boats, Fish the Finest. Today's show is sponsored in part by Stren, the standard of dependability since 1958. Lurlock, turning the tackle world upside down. And Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Today's equipment log is brought to you in part by Lurlock. Their TackLogic technology locks your terminal tackles safely into place. 100% made in America, Lurlock revolutionizing the way you fish. Right at it. I told you, didn't I not tell you? That's a nice one there. Did I not tell you? If you mess with me long enough, you're gonna get it. And you mess with me one time too many. I'll tell you what, that is a strong little fish right there, boys. Howdy. Come up here and say hello to everybody. That's what you're doing, huh? Nice. He followed it way out and hit it off that drop. Ooh, off that drop. I've got a ledge that's coming right across here going straight out. The water I'm throwing in right there is about four feet deep and I'm sitting in about 16 feet. Tell you something you periodically ought to look on the line pool and be sure there's no moss on that because it can affect the action of the bait and also on the hook eyes. Okay. Tell you something else that you need to think about. Let's expand on the strike itself. Now these are factors to consider on every strike. They are boat position in relation to the cover and how the bass is positioned. Was the strike a slight tap or resounding thump? A bass provides a helpful information by how it strikes. Are you listening? Was the fish barely hooked? Did it swallow the bait? Did it short strike the bait? Did it roll on the bait and get hooked in its side? Now, if a bass hits your lure, does it move at all? Now, these could be signs that it's either a big fish or an inactive fish. In either case, you need to respond by slowing down and working each piece of that cover with the utmost precision and always make repeated casts, sometimes with different lures. This is information you must catalog. Jarring strikes often occur from very active fish, while light taps and nibbles will more than likely be from inactive fish. The bass will tell you how they feel about things that day. You just have to listen and concentrate enough to hear. Oh, yes, sir. That's a nice one. This little boy from over around Lynchburg, he said, that's a nice one. Look at that. 
that big fat baby. Yeah, when I was little, in Mulberry Creek, I used to sit on a, a bluff bank and uh, throw grasshoppers in the creek. About that size right there. And watch bass come out from under a limestone shelf and just bust those, curl, I mean, bust those grasshoppers when they'd swim out there. And I used to get some big old black crickets and throw them out there and watch them just come up here and bust them. So there's no doubt bass like grasshoppers and crickets. That one right there did. He's a pretty one too. Short, fat, and nice. You sure are nice. Bill's question and answer of the week is brought to you by LureLock. Our durable tackle boxes will protect your prize lures and make organization fun and easy. LureLock, revolutionizing the way you fish. What's the reason many anglers fail? Many fail because they're reluctant to change, to adjust to something the fish want. They stick to their famed standbys, even when those lures aren't working. Lures, colors, weights, retrieves, depths, there are a lot of adjustments to be made when fishing. Why not make one when needed? You may be only a color shade away from the best day ever. Today's show is sponsored in part by Millennium Marine, a new class of comfort. And Motor Guide, trolling motors engineered for anglers. Closed captioning provided by Power Pole, the original shallow water anchor. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin and their GPS map series, chart plotter sonar combos. With advanced sonar technology like Chirp and exclusive Panoptics all-seeing sonar, you'll spend less time finding your fish. You know, I'm always looking for a better monofilament line. No more, I found one. Trilane's XL. XL's formula has 20% greater knot strength, 50% greater wet strength, and 20% more flexibility than the original formula. What more can you ask for? Berkeley XL. Come be a part of Bill Dance Digital. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Follow us. Now here's something else that's very important. Did you know that you can often judge the activity level of a bass by pinpointing their position in the water column? This is valuable information and it can really help you refine your lure selection and presentation. As a general rule, if a bass strike occurs in the upper one third of the water column, it's a good indication that the fish are very active. They're in a chasing mood and can be caught on flashy, fast-moving lures. Now, if the strike comes in the middle third of the depth zone, it usually signals a moderately active bass. It takes more of a precise lure presentation to entice this fish. Suspending lures are a good choice. A bass that strikes in the bottom third of the water column is likely to be most inactive. Now, this doesn't mean that these fish won't bite, but they're not likely to chase a lure or bait very far. Boy, he knocked the fire out of it. That's an aggressive fish and a good one too, I think. Look at the boil on the water. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, 
mercy. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I knew he felt like he's good as hard as he hit it. Look where that bait is. Did he want it or did he want it? Yes, he wanted it. You can tell that's some. I'm gonna tell you what, that little old pole, look at the backbone that rod's got. Look at that, whop all the way up. We did this on kind of a unique piece of equipment. This little telecast. Like I showed you in the beginning, it's a collapsible rod. Is that a pretty one? It extends to six foot six inches and it breaks down to about 22 inches. And we did it on a fantastic little bait called a crick hopper. Who would think that we'd catch the number of fish that we caught today on this little guy? And we caught some nice ones too. So the next time you go out looking for a good bait, check out the crick hoppers. And also, if you want to try something kind of unique, Try out this quantum telecast. It's kind of unique too. In closing, let me tell you why some fishermen are so good at catching bass. Yes, they cast accurately and have lots of experience, but what probably sets them apart more than anything is their ability to concentrate. When they're fishing, even sometimes when they're not, they don't focus on bass just for a few minutes a day or even for a few minutes every hour. They concentrate all the time. Now, if you're interested in becoming a better bass fisherman, it's vital that you concentrate harder on what the bass are trying to tell you. Listen all the time. If you do, you'll be amazed how quick your success rate will zoom to new heights. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you right here next time. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today. Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Join us here again next week. Now I've gone fishing with Bill Dance today.